Hello sis D and I'm back with another video. Well last night AMD's Lisa Su delivered a keynote address at Computex and we finally got some Navi information and Ryzen 3000 product announcements. Now unfortunately we didn't get all of the details on Navi as a full reveal is coming at E3. However we did get Ryzen 3000 processor information, specs and a launch date of the 7th of July. Now I also presume that Navi will also launch on the 7th of July, however this time it's not confirmed. Now it looks like some rumors were true and others just did not pan out. We also got a surprise teaser from the next generation of Microsoft devices, including consoles, but I'll touch on that a little later on in this video. First, we finally got concrete Zen 2 information. Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 9 were announced. After the keynote address, Ryzen 5 specs went online at AMD.com. So let's start with the Ryzen 5 3600, which is a 6 core, 12 thread Zen 2 CPU. The 3600 has a base clock of 3.6 GHz and a max boost of 4.2 GHz. It has 3 MB of L2 cache and 32 MB of L3 cache with PCI 4.0 support. The Ryzen 5 3600 only requires 65 watts. Now that is really low and I have to say this 6 core 12 thread is looking like it will be the choice for budget builders. Now during the keynote address, Lisa Su also claimed 15% improvement over the previous generation, so this would put it on par with Intel, if not a little bit faster. Multi-core performance has also increased drastically. Now this is amazing once again for budget builders, as the MSRP for the 3600 is only 899 US dollars. Now the 3600X has the same specs as the 3600, but with a higher TDP of 95 watts and a higher base and boost clock with 3.8 gigahertz for the base and 4.4 gigahertz for the boost. Seeing how the 3600X chips are binned, it should clock higher so perhaps we'll get 4.6 to 4.7 gigahertz and this chip will retail for $249. Next we have the Ryzen 7 3700X and the 3800X respectively. Now this is an 8 core 16 thread CPU, it has 4 megabytes of L2 cache and 32 megabytes of L3 cache. Now this is both for the 3700X and the 3800X. The Ryzen 7 3700X has a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz and a boost of 4.4 gigahertz. Once again the CPU is binned so I expect a overclock of 4.6 to 4.8. Now 15% IPC improvement is impressive but the real standout is the 65 watt TDP. This is really really low and much better than the competition and their benchmark suggests that it's outperforming their counterpart. Now the 3800X shares the same core specs, however it has a higher TDP of 105 watts with a higher base and boost clock, 3.9 gigahertz and 4.5 gigahertz respectively. Now once again I believe these will clock higher manually, but we're just gonna have to wait until reviewers get these chips in their hands. The Ryzen 3700X has an MSRP of $329 and the 3800X will retail for $399 US dollars. Now Lisa Su gave us a really big surprise, well not really, it was rumored anyhow, but we did get an announcement of the Ryzen 9 and this chiplet has 12 cores and 24 threads with 6 megabytes of L2 cache and a whopping 64 megabytes of L3 cache. Like all other Ryzen 3000 chips, it will support PCI 4.0. Next AMD did a benchmark on stage against Intel's i9-9920X. The Ryzen 9 went on to destroy its rival CPU. To be honest with you guys, this was definitely a showstopper as it really outclassed Intel's CPU and for half the price. Now Intel's i9-9920X costs roughly $1200, whereas the Ryzen 9 3900X will only cost $499 US dollars. Now in my opinion, Intel is in some serious trouble. They're losing against this processor and they charge twice as much. As well, this processor was not clocked as high, yet it was still beating its Intel counterpart. Now if these CPUs can overclock as well as I think they will, Intel has a serious problem on their hands. Now I will be updating my CPUs from the 1700X and the 1800X and I will go with a Ryzen 9 and Ryzen 7 CPU. I think the entire line is fantastic, although the 5 gigahertz of the box was rumored it didn't happen, I still suspect that these 7 nanometer CPUs will overclock well. I think AMD went with the modest clocks for stability and I wouldn't be surprised if reviewers get it up to 4.8, 4.9 and even
even the elusive 5 GHz mark when they manually overclock it. Now let's talk about Navi. Not too much was revealed but Navi will be called the 5000 series and not the RX 3070 and RX 3080 that was rumored. Now a demo was shown on stage of Strange Brigade between a Navi GPU and an RTX 2070. Now Lisa Su said that this is not running on GCN and mentioned a new architecture called RDNA. Now improvements were touted such as 1.25 times performance per clock versus Vega and as well 1.5 times performance per watt versus Vega as well. Now the reveal will happen once again at E3 which is just a few weeks away. Now I was surprised to see Microsoft at the keynote. Although AMD did talk about their partnership with Sony, Lisa Su took it a step further when she described AMD and Microsoft's collaboration. Now from hardware to software to next generation consoles, they were really swooning over one another. First, Microsoft will incorporate Ryzen into all of their Surface and PC devices. Now this is when I heard the most shocking news. They hinted at the next generation Xbox devices and the Microsoft rep jokingly said that they cannot talk about it right now, although they wish they could. But she did go on to say that it will be some next level stuff. Now I'm just going to play a little bit of the sound clip here and just to let you guys know I will leave a link in the description down below so that you guys can see the entirety of Lisa Sue's keynote address at Computex. Now here's the clip. So I can think of no better way to talk about the PC market than really recognizing Microsoft as the most important partner for not just AMD, but for all of us in the PC ecosystem. And their vision, together with our collective efforts, really drives tremendous innovation. So with that, let me welcome my first guest, Roanne Soans, to the stage. Thank you, thank you. Well, look, I said it before, but I'll say it again. Microsoft is a heart of the PC ecosystem. No, we completely agree, Roanne. I mean, it's, a, it's an incredible vision. And um, AMD and Microsoft have been partners for a long time, mm -hmm. but our relationship has changed. It Can has. you talk a little bit about um, our relationship and what, uh, what we're doing together? Absolutely. So for me, you know, I think back to two years ago, uh, we were getting started back in Redmond between AMD and Microsoft and planning the next generation Ryzen family together. Yes. And I think that we have completely moved the needle in how we approach co-development together. And you're going to see that in what comes to market from both a device level, a driver level, and even the customer experiences that are, that, that are going to be delivered. Uh, from a device level, you are going to see Ryzen integrated into all price points, including premium designs. You are going to see it from all of the top OEMs here in this room with us today. And you're getting into the guts, you know, actual component level choices, you know, getting into solid state drives. So, you know, Roanne, our audience is always wondering what's next. Yes. Are you going to tell them? I know. <laughs> oh, if only I could. If only I could. You know, I. Lisa and I have some inside scoop on the depth of partnership between AMD and Microsoft, not just in the PC space, but also as we look to the data center and the cloud and to graphics and gaming. I am really excited about what we are doing there. I think it is going to be next level in terms of what you can expect from us. Now after hearing that, I am so excited to hear what Microsoft has to say on its next generation Xbox devices. Now all the rumors have said that it will be more powerful than the next generation PlayStation 5 and I have to believe that Microsoft will no longer lose the power crown as they really suffered from having the least powerful console when it came to Sony this generation. Now all in all I would say it was a great address by AMD. We got some exciting new product announcements, improvements over the previous generation and a new GPU architecture. I was slightly disappointed we didn't get too much information on Navi and also that it was only beating an RTX 2070. Hopefully there will also be another Navi GPU beating the RTX 2080, otherwise Navi better be disruptively priced. Now I do think that later this year or early 2020 we will see a higher performing Navi card. Simply put, the Radeon 7 just came out not too long ago so it makes sense not to release a more powerful GPU just yet. However, in a few weeks at E3 we will 
you'll get all the details and availability. The wait is almost over. And to be honest with you guys, I think E3 is going to be an amazing event. We did lose Sony, but we gained AMD, so let's see how this all plays out. Now, I want to know if you guys are excited for the Ryzen 3000, and if you are, what processor do you plan on getting? Are you disappointed on the lack of full information on Navi, or are you just excited to hear the full reveal and launch at E3? Lastly, do you think that the next Xbox device truly will be another level? Please leave your comments down below, and like I usually say, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys on the next one.